Okay, so this is our first topic and it's cells. And there are various things you're going to need to know. So let's have a look at the cells we've got here on this page. First of all, uh, the first cell that we're looking at is an animal cell. So this one here is an animal cell. And this one here is, down the bottom, is a plant cell. Okay, so this is the first thing you need to be reminding yourself of. You've done it lots of times before. You've done it right back in year seven. You need to know the names and the functions of the structures that you can see labelled here, both for the animal and for the plant cell. Now, obviously, you can see from this diagram that there are various things that occur in both types of cells. Everything that's in the animal cell is also found in the plant cell, but there are a couple of things in the plant cell that are extra that you don't find in the animal cell and these are the ones that you've got to be very very clear about so let's have a see first of all we've got the cell wall is extra in the plant cell we've also got a large vacuole and we've also got the chloroplast and obviously there's plenty of them so what would be a good idea is if you now try to draw yourself these cells label up the parts and then write yourself a little memo list of what the important organelles are and their functions. So let's run through those now. First of all, the nucleus, um, which obviously is the largest organelle in any type of cell, and that contains the DNA. And it's important now at GCSE to get the terminology right. You need to be able to explain that DNA codes for proteins. Okay, so let's not be talking about characteristics here. It contains the code for all of the proteins that the cell makes. Okay, so that's the nucleus. Then if we move on to the ribosomes, these are very, very tiny organelles. You can't see them with a light microscope at all, but they are responsible for making the proteins. Okay, so the nucleus contains the code for the proteins. The ribosomes are actually making proteins. Now, that process is called protein synthesis. So, protein synthesis is just the scientific way of saying makes proteins. Okay? Then we can move on to the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is where all the chemical reactions take place inside the cell. So, there will be lots and lots of different molecules in there, lots of enzymes in there, and lots and lots of chemical reactions taking place. Very controlled, but inside the cytoplasm. It's a jelly-like substance, lots of reactions taking place. We're going to talk about the mitochondria in a minute. Um, one is a mitochondrion, plural is mitochondria, um, and we'll skip onto the cell membrane. The cell membrane is controlling entry and exit of substances, okay? So think of it as the bouncer in effect, for the cell. It's allowing certain molecules in, it's allowing certain molecules out, and it's controlling what is passing into and out of the cell. We will come back and talk about the cell membrane in lots of later topics because it's really, really important. So if we now move on to the ones that you're only finding inside a plant cell, we've got the cell wall, which is there for strength and support. Okay, It is rigid, it's not elastic. Um, and that's the difference between that and the cell membrane. Cell membranes are elastic. If you stretch them too far, they'll pop, just like a balloon. Cell wall is not like that, okay? It's a rigid outer layer that's there for support. Um, moving on to the large vacuole, that's then filled with cell sap, which is a watery liquid with a few mineral ions dissolved in it, and that's there to give the cell its shape. And then the chloroplasts, which you'd normally find on a a diagram in a book probably coloured in green because they contain the green pigment chlorophyll and the chloroplasts are responsible for photosynthesis and producing sugars so again we'll come back to them at a later date now if we're going to move on we'll talk a little bit more specifically about the mitochondria because they're quite important okay so this is a mitochondria that we've zoomed in on and enlarged even more than on the previous diagram um, they're smaller than chloroplasts and plant cells will have both chloroplasts and mitochondria. And these mitochondria are responsible for carrying out respiration. And the little bits that are sticking out inside, the little internal projections, that's where respiration is taking place. That's where the energy is being transferred out of glucose and into a form that the cells can use. And we'll talk a lot more about that if you carry on to do A-level, but for now you just need to be able to identify that these little organelles with these funny little structures inside a sausage shape are where respiration, aerobic respiration, takes place. And again, respiration is another topic. We'll come back to it, but for now 
respiration takes place in mitochondria. And respiration is obviously the release of energy from glucose molecules. Okay, what we've got here on this slide now are the two other types of cell that you need to know about. At the top, we've got a bacterial cell, and underneath that you've got a yeast cell. And you need to know the general structure of bacterial and yeast cell. Okay, so look at the bacterial cell and the really, really clear difference is that there is no nucleus present. Okay, there are no organelles in a bacterial cell. So that's the really, really obvious difference. You should always be able to spot a bacterial cell by its lack of nucleus. The only other cell that you might come across that doesn't have a nucleus is a red blood cell. Um, and that's because of its adaptations rather than a general issue with, with animal cells. So you can see it's got a cell wall, it's got a cytoplasm, it's got its cell membrane. Cell wall still on the outside, cell membrane still the inner layer. All of that's still the same. Um, and there's a strand of DNA there. So there is DNA, but it's not inside a nucleus. Usually, we could describe it as a circular strand of DNA. And you will remember that from having talked about plasmids back in year 10 um, to do with insulin. Underneath that, you've got your yeast cell. And this does have a nucleus. So that makes yeast more similar to animal and plant cells than it is similar to a, yeast, to a bacterial cell. Um, Still a cell wall, still a cell membrane, cytoplasm, but the fact that that nucleus is there makes it easier to spot the difference between these two types of cell. So you're looking out for these structures, okay? The very last thing you've got to think about is not something that's really obvious from looking at the diagrams, and that is the scale that we're looking at here. And we'll do some practice on questions to do with looking at scale. But the really, really important key thing is bacterial cells are really really tiny in comparison to any of the other types of cells so if you had to put them in order you'd be looking at the plant cell being the largest they nearly always are the largest followed by animal cell yeast cell and the bacterial cells absolutely tiny in comparison now you can't tell on these diagrams because they've all been drawn to look the similar sort of size obviously to fit on on the presentation but you're aware that you'd have to zoom in an awful lot more on a bacterial cell to get that same appearance. Okay, so if we look at this, this is literally just a summary of what you're going to be expected to know. Structures of animal and plant, and including algal cells. Remember that algae and plants will have similar cell structures. Um, so things like seaweed and pondweed will have similar cells to plants. And you need to know the names and the functions of all those organelles. You need to know the differences between animal and plant cells and the differences found in bacterial cells and yeast cells, how they're similar, how they're different to each other and to the animal and plant cells too. OK, so finally for this topic, um, there are lots and lots of different types of cell, lots of different types of specialised cell, and their adaptations and the characteristics that you see will help them carry out the functions that they have. Um, so what I would like you to do is, as well as having your diagrams of your cells drawn with the structures labelled and information labelling in there and annotating what those structures are responsible for, which we've talked through on the previous slides, I'd also like you to come to the lesson with three specialised cells researched. So choose from this list, make sure you do at least one animal cell, at least one plant or algal cell, and then one other from whichever list you like. Some of them you will have heard of before, some of them you will just hear about over the course of the rest of this year in additional science. But if you've researched structures, adaptations, you've got a diagram labelled and annotated explaining how it does its job, why it's specialised the way it is, then that would be brilliant and I'll see you in class.